Hello, everybody, and welcome to a Camel Sum Middle School screencast. So glad you could join us. In today's episode, we're going to be looking at uh, taking a, an image or an object from Tinkercad and exporting it for use in the Autodesk 1-2 3D Make program that's going to help us get one step closer to laser cutting uh, our golf putter out. Okay, so as you can see, I'm in my Tinkercad uh, project file right now. A um, couple things we want to make sure of before we do anything. Um, we want to make sure that our object is finalized. Um, we cannot adjust the shape, the look, or any attributes of our object after we leave Tinkercad. So now's the time to make any final changes that you want to. Um, secondly, I'd like you to check the size of your object. Okay, you can do this on your own. Left click on your object okay, to expose the guidelines around it. Left click on a box at the corner and check the dimensions. Okay, you see when I click on this box, I've got 100 over here and 100 over here. Well, the parameters of the project are 100 by 100, so I'm playing by the rules there. I'm going to spin this around. I'm going to click the object again. I'm going to check my height. Okay, my allowable height was 50 millimeters, and I am at 47.72, so I am within my specifications, so I'm good to go. Okay, this works. If your golf putter falls beneath the 100 by 100 by 50 threshold, you're good to go. If you're above those numbers, uh, raise your hand, um, find me, and we'll have a conversation about it. Okay? The other thing I want to make sure that you have all done is take your file name and make sure that it is your last name, dot first name, dot putter. Okay? If you don't know how to do this, again, raise your hand, I'll come help you. Okay. If you're happy with your object, if your file name's good, it's time to export. Export is up in the upper right corner. Okay, so simply click export. We want everything in the design. Leave that selected. And we also want an STL. So click STL. Okay, now check this out. Down here in your status bar, your download status bar, this is a file it just downloaded. This file name does not match my file name up here. So we need to do a quick bit of housekeeping, okay? And again, anytime you need to pause this video and go do your work, feel free to pause it, do your work, and come back. Okay, this might be one of those circumstances. So I'm going to come down here, I'm going to hover over my download, and I'm going to right click on it. And I'm going to select Show in Folder. Okay, Show in Folder. So these are all my downloads on the computer so far. And you can see this one is highlighted. This is the one I want to rename. Okay, so I'm going to right click on it, come down to Rename, and I'm going to name it what I've been naming it all along, last name dot first name dot putter. Great. So that's done. Okay, that bit of housekeeping is done. I can leave that alone. Guys, the reason I'm having you do this right here is because we're saving these files on the hard drives of these computers. Okay, so these are going to be mixed with other students' files. And in order to find your own, it's going to be critical to have your name on it. So great. Once you've done that, you can X this box out, and we're done with Tinkercad at this point. So go ahead and minimize this window, okay? I wouldn't close it right now, just minimize it, keep it available to you. Again, anytime you need to pause, pause the video, do some work. Okay, welcome to our next program. This is going to be Autodesk 123D Make. You'll find it on the left-hand side of your desktop. Double-click on that. So Autodesk 123D Make is going to be the program that's going to allow us to slice our object um, for the laser cutter. If you're greeted with these welcome windows, just go ahead and X them out. And we're just going to continue to X out all the welcome windows until we are greeted with a blank screen. Okay, so again, 123D Make takes our three dimensional object and slices it based on some parameters we're about to tell it, and it gets it ready for the laser. So, first thing we need to do is import it. So, we're going to click on import. And since the file that we brought from Tinkercad was a download, we're going to click on our downloads option over here on the left. And look at that, it's waiting for me right there. Isn't that nice? Okay, so I can either double click on that or I can single click and then choose open. Your choice, doesn't matter. So that looks familiar. Okay, one thing I want you to do is orient yourself over here to the right. Look, these are your tools for navigating the screen. Okay, please click the hand tool. Okay, right click is going to orient you around in space. Okay, three-dimensional space, up, down, left, right, all over the place. The scrolling wheel, you press that down, you're moving left and right, back and forth, just like Tinkercad. These controls are the same. Now, these bottom two tools here, please do not use these tools. These are going to allow you to stretch your object and change its shape. We're not changing the shape. That happened in Tinkercad. If we do any of that here, we're going to mess up our work. So please leave these alone. Very good. 
So first thing we need to do is come over here to this settings menu. Okay, this drop down menu right here. What we're looking for is a setting called Boss Laser Putter. If that is not there, you're going to have to follow the following instructions. Okay, if it is there, bear with me for just a second. Okay, for those of you that need to add this item to your list, click on the pencil here to the left. Click on the plus sign down here at the bottom. Come up here where this blue bar just appeared. Double click in there. We're going to type in boss laser putter. Okay, very good. With that still highlighted, come over here to the right hand side of the screen. We want these parameters to change. Our length is now going to be 12. Our width is now going to be 12. And our thickness is going to be 0.25, otherwise known as a quarter inch. Okay? Again, all of these measurements are in inches, so please make sure that you're staying in inches up here in the top window. Horizontal margin is going to stay at 0.2, vertical margin 0.2, slot offset 0.01, tool diameter zeros. Those all stay the same. 12, 12, 0.25. We are done. Now, now we're going to find it in our drop down menu. So, if you've already had this, great. Thanks for your patience. If you just entered it, go ahead and select it. Double check that at the bottom of your screen, it's reflected down here. We want inches 12, 12, 0.25. Okay, make sure that's true. Great. Next move, object size. Now, we're going back to millimeters now. In Tinkercad, we were working in millimeters. We're going to keep doing it here. Inches needs to change to millimeters. First step. Again, please pause this video anytime you need to and make these changes. We're in millimeters, except, look at this, my width and my height are now 203 millimeters. Now in Tinkercad, my object was only 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters, so what's going on? Come down here and click this one called Original Size. That's better. Okay, unclick Uniform Scale. You can zoom in if you'd like. There's my correct measurements in original size, 100 by 100 by 47.7. Okay, this looks good. Original size is checked, uniform scale is not. Next step, construction technique, select a technique. We want stacked slices for this project. Okay, so we're going to select sla stacked slices. Now check this out, guys. Here's your object sliced into quarter inch segments. Okay, that material size you entered up here with the quarter inch thickness, here's that quarter inch thickness represented. So there's my quarter inch slices, there's my complete object stacked. Here's all my laser cut pieces over here. All these slices are falling on a 12 inch by 12 inch sheet of plywood. Okay, great. So, next step, dowels. Okay, dowels are gonna go through our project vertically and allow our project to stack uniformly piece by piece. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select dowels. Okay, notice how it's automatically already put a dowel in there for me, okay? We need more than one dowel. If we only had one dowel in there, we'd stack our slices on it, and they'd have a tendency to spin around that dowel. Moving dowels and creating dowels is easy. Okay, left click on the dowel, drag it around. Okay, you can put this thing anywhere you want. Okay, so I might put this one right here between the P and the K. I kind of like that setting right there. Okay, let's see. Let's let's put it right there. Okay. Incidentally, look over here on your slices. See the dowel, how it shows up there? Okay, that's your first dowel, okay? If you want to drop another dowel, left click. I just created a dowel, okay? So I'm going to drag this one back in. See it dragging across between the Q and the P on your slices over there? I think I'll leave that one right around there. I think that's going to work for me nicely. Two dowels is plenty. That's all we need, okay? Diameter of the dowel is 6.35. This is important. If this does not say 6.35, make it say 6.35 and our dowels are round. Again, pause this video anytime you need to. This is a lot of information. Okay, nice work. Moving on, slice direction. Please do not use this tool. If we have discussed the need for you to use this tool, you will know it by now and we can have that conversation. Okay, modify form. We're not going to do that either. Assembly steps is just kind of a fun tool. Come down here, bottom left, cardboard, change that to plywood. There's my plywood stacked golf putter. I can animate this and show all the stacks stacking on top of one another. The blue lines are my dowels. Isn't that neat? Not a lot of work to be done in this step, just kind of a neat illustration of what's going on.
Okay, now we're going to come down to get plans. This is where it's getting exciting. Now, again, these are your slices laid out on a 12 by 12 sheet of plywood. Okay, if you are looking at two sheets of plywood here, if you're looking at two 12 by 12 sheets, come down here, this drop down menu that says simple, drop it down and select nested. See if that gets you onto one sheet. Guys, our goal, we need to get onto one sheet. And the 100 by 100 specs in your Tinkercad uh, original object should get us there. If they don't, even with the nested arrangement, raise your hand, come find me, we'll figure it out. I'm going to go back to simple for this one since I fit, and it's a little cleaner. Great. Guys, last step. We're almost there. File type for export. We do not want an EPS, so please do not do this. Drop down this menu, select DXF. We want this... We want this in inches. No, we don't. We want this in millimeters. Okay, remember that. DXF, millimeters. I think we're ready. Export. Now, this is going to ask you to sign in at this point. Same deal with Tinkercad. We're going to sign in using social providers. We're going to choose Google. I'm going to enter my email address. Next, I'm going to enter my password. and I'm in. So next step in the exporting, we need to place this somewhere, okay? So on your left sidebar of the export window, it's probably going to look like this. Desktop downloads, documents, so on and so forth, OneDrive, this PC network, okay? Little arrow next to this PC, please click that. It'll drop down a bunch more options, and we are looking for the options called students, okay? It's the K drive, students. Double click on that. Your version of this file is going to be pretty short. All you should see are a couple files, and one of them is going to be called design tech. Double click on that, okay? You are eighth graders. Double click on eighth grade. Double click on your team. I'm going to drop this one in Sequoia, okay? Before I do that, I'm going to enter in my file name, okay? Again, last name dot first name dot putter okay there we go I'm gonna save it I'm done so go ahead and close out of Autodesk when you're ready no need to save your work within Autodesk we've already saved it to the computer you are ready for the next step congratulations